back. It is the Vegas Take Sharp and Shapiro. It is Monday. That means Chris Wynn joining us as well. And if you're listening for the first time, you're saying, hmm, I've never heard these guys before. Hopefully, you'll continue to tune in. We do a show that, in my opinion, is different than any other show in Las Vegas. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, what do you mean? What are you doing differently? Well, first of all, we give you everything from a Vegas perspective. That's why it's called The Vegas Take, number one. Number two. You know, one show or one segment, we might have Michael Avenatti on the show. The next segment, we could have Ron Jeremy on. You never know. You never know what type of guests we're going to have here. We get uh, compelling guests. And I think that that first hour with Michael and Steve Sanchez was compelling radio. I certainly do think that. Of course, we're going to cover all the local stuff, all the local topics, whether it's news, sports, politics, entertainment. But again, it's from a Vegas perspective. And uh, we really enjoy uh, bringing it to you, and we hope you'll continue to listen. If this is your first time listening or you've been, you're a loyal listener, tell your friends about it. Check us out on Twitter, at The Vegas Take. By the way, a reminder, tomorrow, this is going to be a lot of fun. J.D., as you know, a lot of people on the right say, you know, they hate, they call it liberal Hollywood, right? They call it every, you know, li- the liberals, the, the liberal snowflakes in Hollywood on the left, they always go after Trump, blah, blah, blah. So we get a guy coming on the show tomorrow. We can't give out his name. But he is a longtime Hollywood producer. Now, the reason why we can't give out his name is because he's in fear he could lose his job, right? He could literally be blacklisted from the industry. Yeah. So he's going to be hes brave enough to join us tomorrow. He's a conservative, but he is a longtime Hollywood producer. We're going to call him the Hollywood conservative. He's going to be joining <laughs> us tomorrow. It really is sad, though, in this day and age when... You can't honestly speak your mind when it comes to politics in fear of losing your job. I think that's sad. I would never want to work in an environment like that. Look, some people just don't want to talk politics. But as far as Hollywood goes, what would you say, Chris? 95% of people in Hollywood are probably on the left. I think that's fair to say. But, J.D., look, you've had your your your, your thumb into this industry before. You understand the dynamic that is Hollywood and talk radio. Now, do you think it's really that bad where, you know, because, look, there are numerous prominent conservatives that are in that industry and that work in Hollywood, work, whether they're actors, directors, producers, whatever. Uh, do you think it's something that could be overblown as far as, like, no. you know, exposure if you do come out on the right or someone that supports the president? Oh, absolutely, because there is so many things that happen in Hollywood that are very, very hypocritical in comparison to what people accuse Donald Trump of doing. Mm-hmm. A lot of what, you know, Donald Trump with sleeping with women and and all the all these different things that he's had to deal with in his personal life are taking place. People that are that are lashing out at him for that are doing the exact same same thing, sometimes two or threefold. And there's there's a, a very, very aggressive line of hypocrisy taking place. And so I do think that, yes, under those circumstances, it would not be a good thing for this person's name to be brought into public. I think there's a very big distinction between sharing your opinions and then saying things that are a little bit ridiculous. And listen, I don't defend ESPN with the whole Dan Labatard situation and all that stuff. But uh, you can't go on social media and say Donald Trump is a member of the KKK when you're a national reporter for ESPN. You can't do stuff like that. You're probably going to lose your job. First of all, it's, it's probably not true, number one. And number two, just the same thing with Tucker Carlson. You know, when Tucker Carlson goes on his television show and says that white supremacy is a hoax, you can't say stuff like that, okay? You can have an opinion, but at least be educated. And be, it doesn't mean we have to agree with it, but don't say something that is out of bounds and ridiculous. Uh, when, when, look, I'll defend Donald Trump when it comes to this stuff. When it comes to uh, liberal Hollywood or people on the left, when they call him a Klan member, when they say stuff like that, I don't, I don't like that. Well, a lot of that's for shock value. Yeah, well, I don't like mm-hmm. that. I, you know, listen, we say a lot of things on this show. I've never said anything for shock value. I've said it because it's what I truly believe in my heart. doesn't mean everybody's going to agree with me. Here's something else I'm going to say, and we're going to switch topics here real quickly. I think Tiger Woods took performance enhancing drugs. I think Tiger Woods cheated. I've talked to many PGA Tour players and caddies. We had a PGA Tour caddy in studio here a few weeks ago. I asked him that specific question, Darren, who's a longtime PGA Tour caddy, Mm -hmm. and he said, yes, he believes Tiger Woods took performance-enhancing drugs. Well, guess what? Tiger Woods won Augusta National. We know that this past year. He's playing in a tournament back east, and he shoots a 75 on day one. And you say to yourself, all right, well, he's obviously struggling. In the days and weeks leading up to this tournament, he said his back has been very stiff. He's had a lot of issues. This is not a guy that withdraws from tournaments on a regular basis, right? It's been years since he withdrew from an event. Now, he knew he wasn't going to make the cut unless he put up a fantastic... But that's not like Tiger. It's not like Tiger to withdraw from an event. Mm -hmm. 
And after the round, when he shot a 75, he complained about back stiffness. It was all health. Nothing about his game. He didn't even talk about his game. He just talked about his health. And then he withdraws Friday morning. He said he got some therapy Friday morning, and he had to withdraw from the tournament. So is, should, is, this, is this a big story? Because I certainly think it is. And I think if you're a Tiger Woods fan, Tiger Woods is not getting any younger anytime soon. And when he won Augusta National, I said to myself, I wouldn't be surprised if this guy wins another major or two. But after learning what transpired over the weekend and him withdrawing from this tournament on Friday, I'm second-guessing my opinions on that. What do you guys think? Well, clearly the, the comeback was nothing short of miraculous. He was barely walking four years ago. Mm-hmm. Then he comes back and he wins the Masters. He, and we saw him. We saw him at the, the Tiger versus Phil match. I mean, the guy was 6'1", 215 pounds of pure muscle. He looked like he was 25 years old and he was pushing 40, 42. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think there was a really good chance that he did get involved in, in performance-enhancing drugs. I think it's a tad premature, though, to do the uh, the end is inevitable here, right? Because you know, I think that's basically the question you're asking right now, Brian, is what? Is he done? Is there a possibility that can he, win, he can win another major? And we are just coming off the entire, you know, feel-good story of redemption by Tiger Woods getting back into the mix after winning the Masters and how he was able to do that when, quite frankly, let's be honest about it, right, Brian and J.D.? A lot of people wrote him off, said he was done, yeah. it was over. Tiger Woods was never going to get back, not only to win a major, he was never going to get back and win a, win a, win a, any, any tournament, mm-hmm. right? And so he was able to do that, come back and win the Masters. And so the discussion in, in, the, in the very, you know, the very uh, recent, uh, after he did that, right, everybody was talking about, okay, when's he going to do it again? You know, what, what does this mean for the sport of golf as far as, you know, Tiger? And, and where, where is now he in the pecking order in golf again? And he's going to be someone who's consistently – going to be able to contend for 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 a a, a a championship so i mean i think it's a tad premature because we've written this guy up before and he and he's been able to come back well here, and, listen, and make the steps here's what i think tiger woods needs to do i think he'll win a lot of majors just come back to las vegas do what he does best and that is pick up women and cheat that's what he does best right no it's weird right he starts dating i shouldn't say it's weird but he starts dating this uh, woman who owns a few restaurants, my understanding. No, she's a, I, think, I believe she was a restaurant manager was, at, yeah, yeah. At, uh, at one of his restaurants, his restaurant in Jupiter, Florida. If you asked me who's the next woman that Tiger Woods would fall in love with, I would have put it at 101 odds, J.D., that it would have been a restaurant, a local restaurant manager. A Perkins but, waitress or yeah. a Denny's waitress. But speaking of Sorry. odds, okay, Tiger Woods was 4-1 to one to win a major this year, which I thought was ridiculous, and he ended up winning the, the Masters. What do you think the odds will be next year? Knowing what we know about Tiger Woods' health right now, I would put Tiger Woods' odds of winning a major at at least 10 to 1. I, I, I know you're saying it's premature, but I think it is fair to say that if his health continues to deteriorate, he may never be in contention well, in a major and, ever again. And let's consider this. The average golfer now is, is becoming in shape. They're all really, really good athletes. Tiger Woods is what, 40? Except for the guy who won the British Open who looks like 300 pounds of okay. chewed bubble gum. Fine, but that was, that was Lynx golf. It's totally different. <laughs> Shane Lowry has man Shane, boots. Shane Lowry would not win the Masters. Would you, what, what, what do you think Shane Lowry would look like in a wet T-shirt contest? Be honest, J.D. I think that it would be close in a competition between him and Donald Trump right now. <laughs> that would be close. Well, it doesn't matter because Brian doesn't think golf is a sport anyway, said, so Brian, it's not a sport, right, Brian? For, for, Brian, the, for the record, name one, name one golfer you that, don't you, have that, to that you've seen evolve from age 42 on. You've, you've seen actually improve, get better. Oh, not many. Uh, I mean, name one. Just try one. Yeah, well, I don't think not that's many. really the argument, though, right, J.D.? We're not arguing that he's going to get better. I think we're just arguing that whether or not he's going to be a contender, right? Or he's well, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm, I'm just making the argument Shane Lowry has man boobs. That's really <laughs> oh, okay. that's the only argument that I'm trying to make. I don't know what you're talking about. I think about, you're spot on, Brian. When you say <laughs> when you point out uh, you know, 10 to 1, which is 10%, I think you're spot on as far as next year, Tiger Woods winning a major or winning a tournament. Now, but I'm telling you, He's only, he's what, 40? He's pushing 43 at yeah. this point. Yeah. Okay. I still think there's a possibility if he, you know, if he's able to maintain himself, he's able to to get himself right physically and mentally, I think that he can be someone who contends yeah. for tournaments when he gets to the 45-year mark or 46-year mark. By the way, speaking of golf, the Shriners Hospital for Children's Open, which is yes. the PGA Tour event in our backyard, is coming up in October, and uh, the man who is the director of that tournament will be joining us this week. He'll be uh, coming in to talk a little bit about that. Last year at the, at the PGA event, he had some pretty good players. I saw Ricky Fowler out there as well. By the way, Tiger Woods, his first win ever 
on the PGA Tour. Guess where that was, folks? No, I know what you're thinking. Not Laughlin, Nevada. Las Vegas, Nevada. Yes, that's right. That's where Tiger Woods. I was thinking Reno. Oh, is that what you were thinking? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Tiger Woods won his first event here. He hasn't come back since. So uh, we hope that there is a slight chance that Tiger will play. We had Jordan Spieth here last year. That was kind of fun to watch him play. He didn't play very well. Speaking of the man who won here last year, Br- Bryson DeChambeau, he is getting hammered on social media. There's a video clip of Bryson DeChambeau over the weekend. If you know who this guy is, he's the guy who's very stylish. He's also very slow on the golf course. I don't mean mentally. I mean on the golf course, he's, he's, very, he's just slow. He has a six-foot putt in this tournament. Keep in mind, he's not even in contention over the weekend. It, I'm not exaggerating. It took him two and a half minutes to line up a six-foot putt. He lines up the putt. Then he looks at his yardage book. I don't even know. I guess for the contours of the dream, uh, the green. Then he lines up the putt again. He's playing with his two playing partners. I believe one of them was Justin Thomas. You can see him kind of rolling his eyes. So you see this on social media. Justin Rose and, and Brooks Kepka are just killing him. They're saying, dude, just putt the ball. They're making all these comments. Yeah. Uh, slow play on the PGA Tour. Brooks Kepka. Sunday at the British Open was complaining about his playing partner, J.B. Holmes, playing too slow. And a lot of people are saying uh, the PGA Tour needs to police this better. They need to do something better about this. Now, I've played a couple rounds of golf with you guys. You guys are not necessarily slow golfers, but is there anything worse? Forget about playing for millions of dollars. Is there anything worse if you're, let's just say, in Las Vegas playing in 110-degree heat and you're playing again with a bozo? You're not even playing for money. You're playing with a bozo that lines up his putt and you end up playing a five-and-a-half-hour round. You want to strangle the guy with your putter if you're playing with somebody like that, right? These guys are playing for millions of dollars, but they're, they're complaining about Bryson DeChambeau being too analytical on the golf course, and it, it really makes Bryson look really bad. But I would counter that, though, Brian, because I'm one of those people on the golf course, you know, I like to partake in my adult beverages. So it's more about, you know, it's more about the leisurely aspect of the golf game. So, no, I would not be up in arms if uh, if a round gets slowed down a little bit. I'll be just like Rodney Dangerfield, baby, in Caddyshack. Just crank up crank up a little music on the uh, golf bag and, 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 uh, and pop the keg open. I'm good to go. JD, you're not you're not necessarily a slow player when you hit and you average the over under for you another Vegas line of how many golf balls you lose on the course is about fourteen and a half. Usually, I would take the over and I would win. I, you've, I, I you've, think that's probably too high. <laughs> I would say between eight and ten. How many is, houses? Is reasonable. How many houses do you think you hit in one round of golf? Be honest, don't lie. On a course yeah. like Spanish Trail, I don't care. Just give me give me an average. Well, some some courses the houses are further away from the course. I would say probably I could be counted on for about two. <laughs> I'm always afraid that so there's one each side. Right? I'm always one, afraid. Yeah, 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 one, one every nine when sounds I, about right. When I play around a golf with JD, I'm always afraid. I hope there's no kids in the backyard playing in the pool or something because I think he's going to kill one of well, them with yeah, one of his tee shots. I, I hit the ball fairly hard. You do. I've, I've, I've got a pretty powerful swing. But, yeah, my, my accuracy, I, it needs work. Yeah. It doesn't exactly go straight. It, it though, leaves a lot okay. to be desired. We'll All put right. it that way. <laughs> we'll go to the GCI guy's phone line. By the way, that number to call, 257 257- Five three nine six. Let's go to Jim. Jim, what's going on, my what's man? What's up, Jim? Hey, Brian. Good to talk to you in the morning. Thank you. I appreciate um, that. So I figured out a solution for the slow play in golf for this situation that we had over the weekend. Let's hear it. We need to we need to put in a shot clock. Hmm. How would you police that though? I'm listening. So okay, like so yeah. Go ahead. Um. In the NBA, they have a 24 second clock. In in. Uh, College basketball, they have a 35-second clock. NFL has a, a, a play clock. That's true. I, and on, on many of my dates, I have a five-minute shot clock. I'm sorry. Go ahead. That was just Go awful. ahead, Jim. Okay, so that was terrible. <laughs> as far as, like, on the greens or on the approach, um, give them 90 seconds. Okay, so let me ask you this. Seconds, but let me ask you this, Jim. to line up your shot okay. and take it. What do you do, Jim, if it's at nine, about 90 seconds and the guy is in his routine and he's already has his stance and he's, you think he's about five or six seconds ready to go? Here's what I want. I think this would make for better TV. I want somebody from the group saying, penalty. I just want him to throw his hand up and say penalty. I don't think it, it could be in the middle of the swing. I don't care. I love it. I, don't you like that? I like it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, have have a PGA tour official with with a, a yellow penalty marker. So what would be the penalty? And a one shot, a one shot penalty cuz JB yeah, Holmes wouldn't shot. even JB Holmes would not break 100. 
he would not break 100. Uh, Bryson DeChambeau would probably not break 90. So they would have to change their routine and all that stuff. But I like it. I like your idea. Exactly. And, and <laughs> you know what the difference is between Santa Claus and, and Tiger Woods, right? What's that? Santa only has three hoes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good joke. Well, how slow do you think? Day, guys. All right, I was going to thank you, Jim, for the call. I appreciate it. How slow do you think Tiger Woods would play a round of golf if we had a couple topless women following him around? That would never happen, but if it did, well, how do you think that would work? It would work? be at an absolute snail's pace, and there's no question about that. <laughs> I think it would. I think I like, yes. gosh, I kind of like Jim's idea. You know, they've tried the, the shot well, clock. The do, pitch. do we know that they don't have one? On the PGA Tour for TV time, I mean, they they would kind of have to, wouldn't they? Yeah, I not think, I think not they would. No, but there's no clock on the course there's, where there, these I mean, there's, players there's are looking be, at but it. To there's see commercials. What the time situation. There's is. a lot of things that are that are taking place because of television that they have to you know take into account. I'm guessing I I, I would be totally comfortable with a 120 second golf clock. That's too long. Two minutes is way too. That's insane. 90 second golf clock. I think you should do one minute. I, I, honestly, one minute. Yeah, I think you should do one minute. I think golf takes way too long. I, I actually agree with Jim, and I think. I think one minute is is sufficient. I don't know if you guys had a chance to catch Hard Knocks. First couple episodes yeah. of Hard Knocks. Uh, I did. Chris, did you? JD, did you have yes, a chance I to did. catch was, Hard Knocks? I did get a chance to catch it. No. Well, uh, JD has a family. We don't. So, you know, sometimes sometimes you have time, sometimes you don't. Yeah. But uh, I thought it sucked, quite frankly. I, really? I, I didn't think that it was very good. I didn't think that John Gruden was being exceptionally genuine and i think when you have cameras in front of you i think this show has gotten progressively worse but one thing we did learn in hard knocks is the antonio brown situation with this helmet so chris i want you to talk a little bit about this what do you make of this helmet situation and give people a little bit of background on this story well th- it was one aspect that they didn't address the actual helmet situation they talked they talked with uh, antonio brown and they addressed his situation as far as his feet and his injuries in the first episode and now in the past six to seven days it's come to light as to his situation and and what he feels about certain things okay and there was of course the the revelation we found out that apparently had cryotherapy that uh in the off season that impacted his feet and whether or not you know his recovery is going to be uh, 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 on schedule and apparently uh, there's been some setbacks with that, but that's not something that's considered season-threatening, right? That's going to keep him out this season. And then, of course, there was a discussion of, you know, his transition to the Raiders and what, what it would mean from a chemistry standpoint. And they focused on that in Hard Knocks as well, too, as well as another no, another other things. You talked about John Gruden. I, I mean, I, I think he's going to end up being the star of the show, Brian. I think he's, look, he's a personality. He's a coach. He's a quotable guy. If there's anything that John Gruden does, it's give quotes, okay? And that's perfect for a show like Hard Knocks. But, uh, you know, they had a couple other storylines. They had, a, you know, a defensive lineman who was a long shot who doesn't go to, you know, his physical therapy and ends up getting kicked off the team, booted off the team right away. That was a storyline. And then, of course, they focused on Derek Carr, the quarterback of the team, and, and his family life and, and what exactly that's going to you know, transpire with him and the team. But getting back to Antonio Brown. So there was this revelation here this past week with respect to him and the helmet situation in the NFL. Now, apparently, and look, I don't know all the details here, but apparently there are some new helmets in the NFL with respect to technology and, and, and you know, what the players are going to be expected to wear. And it's a little bit different, I guess, than the, the helmets that, they, that, they've, that they're used to wearing. So Antonio Brown basically has come out and said, I am in the position and I'm willing to retire as opposed to wear these new helmets because he has a real issue with them, apparently. Yeah. And, and that if he's not allowed to wear the older version of his helmet, which he wore last year, then he's going to retire from the team. Now, obviously, this sends shockwaves down the backs of everybody who's in Raider Nation and uh, the Oakland Raiders organization because you're talking about uh, arguably a top three. It's not really arguably. He is a top three wide receiver in the NFL, mm-hmm. and they make the move to get him. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... If, if there was any possibility that he would retire, this would be a major blow to the Raiders. And we all know about the dynamics here in Vegas because it's their last season in Oakland. And so they want to go out with a splash in Oakland. And, you know, the anticipation is that they can contend in, in the AFC and be a team that's relevant when it comes to maybe a Super Bowl contender. That would take a huge blow, Brian and J.D., if Antonio Brown was not in the mix. I'll tell you what. So if, that's if, why I think people are kind of uneasy. If you're if you're thinking of Raider Nation, the fans, mm-hmm. and the organization, I'll tell you what. If I'm Allegiant, 
airlines right now, I am not very happy with Antonio Brown <laughs> at all. No, I don't think. And I wonder, if it's, I'm, I'm assuming that it's because the helmets are more padded now because of CTE and all these different mm-hmm. issues. I'm assuming that, it, that it's to help him and to protect him and his brain and his head from head injury. Yep. So I don't understand. Maybe he's superstitious. Maybe there's some, some type of luck being attached to his success predicated on his helmet. I have no idea. But it doesn't make a lot of sense to me, considering that it's going to help him not sustain, I'm just assuming this, not sustain serious head injuries like CTE. Take a quick break. When we come back, I'm going to ask J.D. how many games he thinks the Raiders are going to win next year. We'll get his thoughts on that. Take a quick break. Be back right after this. You're listening to The Vegas Take on the all-new 101.5 FM, 720 AM. K Don.